Hi, this is Swati from the Software Testing Help team and today we are going to talk about smoke testing and sanity testing. And before we go any further, um, I believe it's important to establish that this is not a smoke testing versus sanity testing video per se because I don't believe that it's a good idea to compare two things that don't have anything in common except that uh, they are testing types. So we'll do, we'll treat this video or we'll treat this segment as you know, a discussion on two independent topics, smoke and sanity testing. The only form of, you know, um, common factor that these two have, uh, with, you know, among, uh, in between these two uh, types of testing is that uh, they are all a kind of preliminary testing that you would normally perform. And we'll talk about what I mean by that. So before we go any further, uh, these are the things that we'll try to answer. What is smoke, uh, smoke or sanity testing? When are these testing types performed? where, why, how and who performs this. Now this is not an uncommon practice for uh, you know STH and those of you who've been following STH can you know um, I mean already know this methodology. We believe that any concept complex, simple, whatever it might be can be really understood by asking the question words like you know the ones that you're seeing on my screen asking all these question words pertaining to that concept. So I'll first you know we'll talk about what each of these testing types is and then we'll you know try and discuss the other types uh, as we go. So to begin with smoke testing. Now there is a lot of difference of opinion on you know what goes on and who does who is who does what and whether it is functional non-functional and all that um, but to keep it very simple in my opinion smoke testing is a two-point agenda. One is you would check whether or not the application is running and the second thing is we check whether we have the correct version installed. So it's not only about the AOT version. Sometimes, you know, there's a version of the database that needs to be linked to. There's a version of, you know, the middle layer uh, APIs and all that. So we will make sure that the whole configuration of the system is linked up correctly with the right versions of the software. So we kind of take a look at, you know, are we going to test, you know, um, the application and is the application intact the way it should be? Uh, so smoke testing is something, you know, is as simple as these checking these two points. So that being smoke testing, I mean, it is, an, it is understood that it is one of the first things that you would normally perform. So any time I would say coming back to when is smoke testing performed, um, any time a code gets deployed, any time, you know, a new build is available, Smoke testing is one of the first things that needs to happen to make sure that everything is uh, at least available. If not, you know, working 100% right, we should at least make sure that it's available for us to move to the next step. And usually following smoke test is what we, um, what we do is sanity test. Sanity test, on the other hand, is um, a little more concentrating on the functionality and more specifically the critical functionality. There is some things that are preliminary to whether or not we can use the software. So in order for us to determine whether or not we can go ahead and continue testing this software, we look at some critical functionality that is mandatory for it to work for us to move any further. So checking of those things is sanity testing. So smoke testing is the first step followed by sanity testing and once sanity testing is passed and we feel like you know enough functionality exists and then we can go ahead and then we start the regular testing cycles uh, functional or non-functional that is up to you I mean whether you want to go with like the regular functional testing cycles or you want to follow it up with performance testing security testing usability testing so for both functional and non-functional forms of testing I feel like the first point of check, first checkpoints that you know uh, that we should cross are the smoke and sanity testing. So this is a very basic definition. Let's illustrate or you know let's kind of like um, you know uh, ponder a little more on the what, why, uh, the other factors that I was talking about earlier. So the definition wise we talked about uh, you know how smoke testing is whether or not things are available and you know do we have the right configuration and all that. Sanity testing is do we have the most critical functionality up and running and all that. So 
the most important question i mean again at this point of time somehow i mean i have seen this need uh, in the testing com community that we feel like we have to con categorize every form of testing into functional or non functional i mean i don't see why we should do that everywhere because whenever the, the topic of smoke or sanity testing comes up the usual question that follows up is you know is smoke testing functional testing is sanity testing functional testing so I don't believe that this level of categorization is any way important to what we're doing but then if you really have to you know have that clear cut demarcation I wouldn't um I would not I would not list smoke testing as a functional testing because at at its core we are not checking for the site's operations nor are we checking for any of the business related activities that you know your application can uh, accomplish so smoke testing i would say is a kind of a checkpoint only not really worried about the functionality so at the other end are we checking any non functional elements i don't think so either so smoke testing it is not very um it is it is not very meaningful to say whether it is a smoke uh, whether it is a functional or non functional testing but one thing that we can say that it is a validation technique which means you actually have to deal with the aut that we have on the other hand smoke testing is testing the critical functionality of the application so following that rule smoke uh, sanity testing is a functional testing type um again the next point of when is this done now any time a new build is deployed i would say smoke and sanity testing should follow now where is this done now builds can get deployed to qa environment and to production environment of course in the development environment they create it and you know the software is originates from there so there's no special deployment steps necessary so builds can get deployed to qa environment and production environment so any time a new build is deployed to qa environment we do a smoke and sanity testing and this is performed by testers so this is if we are answering the question who also here so this is done by the qa team members or the testers however when the build is deployed to production also smoke and sanity tests happen because you know uh, you cannot just you know deploy make the application go live not even checking whether or not it works in the real time environment so there is also smoke and sanity testing that happens when the application gets deployed to production now here it depends on the company and their processes actually for some companies it is the qa team that performs this and for some other companies it is the operations team now there is no advantages or disadvantages on who does it and why and all that it is just a process that it is uh, that is followed you know uh, depending on uh, which company uh, follows what approach so it's like you know there's no um, i mean there, there's no rule that you know one qa team has to do it or operation team has to do it it's it's not an industry wide uh, uh, regulation it's just that whatever is convenient they're going to go ahead and do it but if the operations team is performing the testing then the qa team would provide you know um the steps or the test cases whatever you want to call they will provide instructions on how this sanity on smoke testing has to happen now the question of why why do we have to do a smoke and sanity testing now it is very important to perform a smoke and sanity testing before we go ahead and start the test cycle officially because testing is a reactive job if the application was or has any kind of issues that will prevent us from going ahead and testing uh, and it is it is a good idea to find them sooner than later because testing is like you know the penultimate step and if any changes or if any uh, delays happen in the testing phase it is going to reflect either in the uat or in the you know final go live date which is never a good idea so instead of you know going into the testing phase and then figuring out that something is not working out then actually coming back uh, rolling over wasting a lot of time instead of going through all that uh, all that trouble it's a good idea to actually uh, start ahead make sure that these checkpoints are tackled and then move further so why this is to make sure that the qa team um this is to actually make sure the qa uh, the the in the qa environment if the aut is ready to test or not so this is basically you don't want to cascade any uh, you know uh, delays all the way up to the go live date and the second step is to actually make sure that the application is consistent and stable
So this is more important in the production environment, of course. Uh, and how is this done? So this is also another question. So do we have to document the smoke testing test cases? Do we have to document the sanity testing test cases? All of that. So again, in my opinion, whatever works for you in your particular situation should be a good idea or, you know, good approach to follow. So what I'm saying is for smoke testing, most of the times there are um, no special test cases required. However, if there is a particular configuration and you want to make sure that consistently you are checking for it every single time, so it's a good idea to document it because when you document it, you are bringing in a certain level of repeatability into the process and you're actually making this process, uh, you know, not be dependent on one particular team member or, you know, any of the other circumstances like that. So if you have a complicated sequence of steps that you need to follow for your smoke test, it is recommended that you document it. But for sanity testing, usually it is done via test cases. You will have a set of test cases that you will run. Now these set of test cases, again the question will be like, do I have to create them? How does it work? You don't have to explicitly create them because you will have your functional testing suites already. So when you have your functional test cases, it is just a matter of picking and choosing which ones you want to execute for the sanity testing part. So I would say your sanity test suite is a subset of, of the functional testing, uh, you know, um, functional test cases. So your entire sub-functional test cases, uh, depending on the features that are, that are going out as part of a particular release or a build or whatever, you're going to identify that critical functionality that is important for, uh, you know, that is important to work and then you will prepare a list and keep it, uh, keep it ready ahead of time so that, you know, when the build gets deployed, you can go ahead and test it. Now, every time the build gets deployed, so it might be because of the bug fix, it might be because of, you know, a scope change or whatever it might be, Smoke and sanity testing are mandatory and have to be performed. And who we have already answered that. If you are doing it in a QA environment, it is usually the testers. If the build is deployed to the production environment and has to be followed up with a smoke or sanity test, it is either the QA team or the operations team. So that is a slight overview and also uh, I've heard one of our clients, you know, refer to smoke plus sanity test phase in a testing as discovery testing. Uh, again, I, I, at this point of time, I don't know if that's an industry-wide nomenclature or it was specific to that particular client, uh, but then discovery testing is just smoke and sanity testing together. Um, then also there is this, you know, confusion on, you know, so it, do I have to do smoke, sanity, regression, functional, expiration? So what order in, in uh, what is the order in which this testing has to go on? So the other day uh, in the class, you know, while we were brainstorming this topic, there was a very simple real life example that came into discussion. And that is, see, when you actually, you know, when you're trying to test drive a car, what do you do? You just sit inside, you just, you know, turn the key first. Now, no smoke is coming out of the bonnet and if everything starts fine, then only you move to the next step of the, your, you know, test drive. So the first, that turning the key, nothing, you know, nothing producing smoke and all that, that's basically smoke testing. You're making sure that it is available, it is, you know, right, going to work for you and, you know, will not, like, you know, break down on you. And the next thing is you'll check for are the brakes working, am I able to turn, can I honk the horn. So all of these things are sanity testing, the most critical functionality that you need to run. And then you kind of, like, you know, get a feel of it, drive haphazardly here and there, expiratory testing. Following that up with, you know, uh, a kind of structured map that tells you where you need to go, that's, you know, the functional testing cycles. And this example kind of like, you know, demystified the whole concept for a lot of team members. So I thought, you know, this might help our video uh, viewers as well. So that's smoke and sanity testing. If you have any comments, let us know in the, um, you know, comment section. Thank you.